Good morning and good afternoon to our viewers around the world. I'm Kate Seeley, Vice President for Arts and Culture at MEI, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to today's panel organized in partnership with the Goethe Institute in Washington, DC. We are delighted to be hosting with the Goethe Institute a conversation about the thriving Syrian arts community in Berlin. This growing Syrian creative hub is a result of Syria's decade-long bloody civil war, which forced many millions to flee for safety. Hundreds of thousands of those refugees were welcomed in Germany by Chancellor Angela Merkel, whose government invested the resources necessary to help the Syrian refugees integrate and have a better chance at success. We at MEI are delighted to tell the story of how Syrian artists were welcomed into Berlin's very supportive multicultural arts community and, and have, for the most part, Thrived. We want to thank the Goethe Institute for helping make this discussion possible. It's an honor to partner with them on this panel to tell a story about the challenges of relocation, integration, and restarting life as an artist in a new country. This panel is being organized in conjunction with our current exhibit of Syrian contemporary art on view at the MEI Art Gallery. In this moonless black night features 14 leading Syrian contemporary artists whose work reflects on the terrible impact of the war on the lives of ordinary citizens. All of the artists in the show are now living abroad, including several in Berlin, and among them is one of the panelists today, Khaled Barake. Now I urge anyone living in or near DC to come visit the show. It's a very moving show. It's gotten great reviews, and it's been extended through August 20th and is open for timed appointments. You can make them on the MEI website at mei.edu, or you can view the work online. Now, our panel discussion today features three Berlin-based Syrian creatives, artist Khaled Bereke, actor Kenan Hamedan, and filmmaker Diana El Jeroudi. They'll be in conversation with writer and editor Malou Halasa. Now, MEI hosted Malou back in 2014 to discuss a book she just co-edited, Syria Speaks, Art and Culture from the Frontline, and we're so delighted to welcome Malou back today to moderate this panel. Malou has co-edited four other anthologies on the culture and politics of Syria, Iran, and Lebanon. She's a contributing editor to the Marquez Review and a novelist. So Malou, so great to see you again. Thank you for leading this conversation and thanks for our artists for sharing their experiences with us today. And now just a few housekeeping notes. I'll be very quick to submit your questions. Uh, viewers, please use Zoom's Q&A feature, which you can find on your Zoom screens. For those calling in by phone or watching our panel on the live stream, you can ask a question by emailing events at mei.edu. And if you have any technical issues, please email events at mei.edu. I'm now going to hand the panel over to Lena Junk of the Goethe Institute for a few words. Lena is the Director of Cultural Programs North America at the Institute. And I'm so glad, Lena, we finally gotten a chance uh, to work together on an event. So thanks for your support. And thanks also to Lina Kunt for your support as well. And now Lina Nyonk, the floor is yours. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, I wish you all a very well, um, warm welcome uh, to this panel discussion today. I'm the program director of the Goethe Institute Washington DC, and I'm speaking to you from 14th Street in DC, which is where our new institute moved a year and a half ago. And you see this in um, our new building in my background here. Mm -hmm. So I'm very pleased that the long lasting partnership with MEA led us to today's virtual panel. And I would like to thank Lynn and Kate especially for that. So Syrian artists and creatives made a huge influence in German art scene in, the, uh, in Berlin, especially in Berlin in the last decade. And I, um, should I thought I should mention that uh, our Goethe Institute in Damascus, which opened in 1955, had to close in 2012, but in 2016, it created a symbolic space of cultural encounters in Berlin uh, called the Goethe Institute Damascus in Exile. And this cultural space in Berlin showed the work of all the amazing Syrian artists who fled their country and created a vivid dialogue between them and the Berlin citizens. And since then, some of these artists have found in Berlin their new home. And today we will hear more about their work and I'm very curious to hear which impact the city and its people made to them and how they influenced the city. Thank you. Our panel this afternoon 
or, or it, it, morning in DC, afternoon in London and in Berlin. It's called reseeding culture. Arts and culture may not seem prominent on the current news cycle agenda about Syria. However, during the height of the conflict, their role was pivotal in resisting the regime's narrative. Back then, artists, actors, and filmmakers inside the country faced the constant threat of arrest. Many literally risked their lives. The great exodus of Syrians in 2015 and 2016 did not stifle their creativity. Rather, it moved the centers of artistic and cultural production elsewhere. In Europe, an older generation of artists and filmmakers gravitated to Paris. A younger generation moved to Berlin, which has emerged in the past few years as a new hub of Syrian arts and culture in the diaspora. Not all who came to the city were refugees. The artist Khaled Barake, studying in Germany, couldn't go home and discovered in Berlin a vibrant, he said, volcanic art scene. The actor Kinan Hamedin was invited through a theater workshop during the Syrian war and stayed, inspired by the city's diverse theater and live performance with its free expression both on stage and off. Others like documentary filmmaker Diana El Jaroudi encountered conservative and commercial approaches to the art of filmmaking in other countries and cities and found in Berlin a critical space of unconventional voices and a sweet spot that I'm hoping that she will talk about later with us. In ancient Greek, diaspora means to scatter. Dictionaries of etymology cite early uses of the word in botany and in the Bible in reference to seeds and semen, which suggests a further meaning to diaspora. With, disper with dispersion come the possibilities of pollinization and for, uh, pollination and fertilization. The same is true of uprooted culture. Through encounter, exchange, and collaboration, it recedes itself and once transformed, grows anew. Or as the Indonesian writer Laxmi Pamukjak wrote, the truth is culture is always hybrid, a self-perpetuating frontier. It embodies and results in difference. Somewhere along the road, it also becomes a site through which the past returns and is remembered and celebrated, no matter how disjointed, flawed, or denigrated. For it is all there, fragile but immemorial, as permanent as the way our face turns to certain light. Khaled Barake, Kenan Hamedin, and Diana El Jaroudi join us this afternoon to talk about Berlin culture, the opportunities and challenges for Syrian artists, diaspora, and the meeting between the new and the old. We will begin with visual presentations from our guests and then start the conversation. If audience members have questions, please send them to us. Our first presentation is from the artist Khaled Barake, presently participating in the uh, Middle East Institute's uh, show in this moonless black night, Syrian art after the uprising which marks the 10th anniversary of the Syrian revolution. Since fuller biographies for all our speakers are available on the Middle East Institute website, I wanted to talk about Khaled Barakay and his work from my experience. We first met when he contributed photographs and texts from his installation regarding the pain of others from 2013 to Syria Speaks. An, an anthology I co-edited about the creative outgoing, uh, outpouring of the Syrian revolution. He had been living in Germany since 2010 and then was studying art in Frankfurt. A nash, a stretcher or beer, which had taken 135 people to their graves in a cemetery in Da'al, Syria, was dismantled, smuggled out of the country and sent to him in Germany. The wood that arrived was in various dimensions. Some of it, the artist left alone while other pieces were refashioned into a chair or a throne and all were left laying on the floor. Like all of the work Khalid does today, regarding the pain of others has meaning beyond one specific experience of war and resonates deeply in the pool of emotion and a universal meaning. He started the organization Co-Culture to address the challenges faced by displaced artists and cultural producers around the world. However, today I've asked him to speak about his work. His art is driven by his reoccurring observations of longstanding social justice, 
It is creative practice as a tool for societal change. Khaled Barake. Thank you so much, Malo, for the introduction. And pleasure to be among all uh, of you. And uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, maybe after the, the introduction, I will jump right away into in presenting uh, one or two work, if the time will allow it. Uh, so let me share my screen. Uh, I will present work I did recently um, in front of the High Court of Copland. Um, can you see the screen? Yeah? Cool. And it's called Mute. Uh, and the work basically uh, started during the time of um, uh, lockdown. And uh, there was, uh, parallel to this, there was the first trial uh, ever against the Syrian regime happening in Germany against two Syrian men uh, who arrived to Germany as refugees. Then there was a court case uh, built um, uh, against them. And while this trial was happening, I was developing this piece uh, where I collected close of uh, uh, 49 Syrian activists living in the diaspora, and I was uh, in conversation uh, with the human rights activist uh, Mariana Kapitli about the piece and where we should install it and the importance of what's happening in the court today. And that's why we decided at the end to install it there, kind of bringing us uh, in front of the court because there was uh, not allowed to anyone uh, to, to uh, form any kind of demonstration. Um, so basically just to run, so this is, you see here, this is where we installed the, the, the piece. And in the first floor, there was the, the trial happening while we were uh, outside. Um, so basically, and the, the whole idea, idea was to, to bring us there to be, because this is our trial. We want to know, we want to hear what's happening. And we also want to say, we are here, we are hearing. Uh, so what I did as a symbolic act as well of what has happened also during the demonstrations in, in Syria when they were uh, arresting people from the, the street and getting them to jail, I kind of uh, cut the heads of the, of the mannequins and made it face down kind of in the body and uh, where the, 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 throat, the throat kind of become a horn, maximizing the voice that was trying to be muted, specifically by uh, these two guys. One of them, he was his main mission was uh, arresting people from the street and bring them uh, to the prison. In a way, also, it created kind of parallel um, court uh, or trial outside, uh, where we cooperated with the European uh, Center for uh, Human Rights and Constitutional Rights, uh, together also with Families for Freedom and uh, uh, Caesar Family Association. Uh, so we joined also on the second day our uh, our uh, uh, forces, I will show you at the end of the, of the photos. So, and the whole idea was to create kind of this parallel trial uh, where, uh, so basically the, 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 the court is a place where, for me, it's a theater place, right? It's a theater. It's, so everything runs by, by the script. Uh, people dress up even, and they come to the place and they have a specific uh, uh, answer or specific question that needs to be answered without emotion. So we thought we want to bring um, attention to the voices of the victims so they can speak up outside the script of the, the, the structural script of the, of the state or of the, uh, in this case, the, the, the court itself. So basically, uh, wait a second. So yeah, exactly. So this is where they brought their, uh, the photos of their loved ones and they presented kind of uh, uh, in the, in the, um, during the demonstration where they kind of have a platform to, to tell their stories out of this, out of the official narrative or from the law uh, perspective. Um, so this is one work I know I have very short time. Let me check the timer because I, yeah. Okay, so there's a little bit of time to talk about the other work. So just to jump uh, very quickly to the other work, I did the other work, it's called On the Ropes. Uh, and I did this when I had, uh, uh, the, during the time of, um, after in 2013, I had uh, depression and it was uh, uh, deep in kind of, and I uh, felt unstable where I am and everything was shaking around me. So I want to point out to this, and stability. So basically what I, I did, I, I was living in a space where I 
wasn't allowed to live in. It's my studio, but I, I needed to. I didn't have another place to live in. So I, I decided to, and usually in open studio days, you open your studio for guests. They come in, you, you kind of, all the artists, they clean up their studio and they put their artwork on the wall. It's a good a moment to connect with the curators, collectors, etc. And I felt um, not in the right mindset and emotional state of uh, being to do that. So I decided to present my uh, furniture as it is like the whole studio as it is with one small details that I hang everything from the ceiling so above the ground that the ground 15 centimeter then I portrayed the space later and add, added uh, um, uh, several uh, 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 TED talk and uh, to uh, kind of also portray my my um, my emotional state at the moment so I will show you very quickly Vulnerability and pushed. You know I how I feel back. about vulnerability. I hate vulnerability. And you know how I feel about vulnerability. I hate vulnerability. Vulnerability is vulnerability, vulnerability pushed. pushed. I push back. Vulnerability pushed. You know how I feel about vulnerability. I hate vulnerability. And you know how I feel about vulnerability. I hate vulnerability. Is vulnerability pushed? I push back. Vulnerability pushed. You know how I feel about vulnerability. I hate vulnerability. Yeah, I will keep jumping on. I would have anything. That, video. that was the opposite, actually. I was uh, infected. Please. Yeah, and so on. So that that uh, let's. Yeah, and the, the, the video go on where you see the all the pieces kind of I fixed the camera. Feeling and, afraid when it uh, and part of ah. the furniture and to kind of give this space the, the This is something chronic. Day after day you face a blank page and nothing is coming and those days turn to weeks and weeks to months and pretty soon Yeah, and so on and so on and it keeps going. And later on uh, that was the first uh, um, installation. The second installation, I show the piece uh, in um, in Berlin. I was invited, so it was. I kind of had the same installation, but in different uh, uh, in different room. I uh, imported part of the of the object to the second room, and I applied the same audio. And um, I'm no stranger to anxieties, and although I'm talking here about the the power of emotions, I do know the power of emotions. I have discovered over time. But emotions are not limitless, you know, they have a limit. There comes the moment, it's like a tipping point or a threshold, when you get tired of feeling afraid, when you get tired of feeling anxious. Yeah, and in the and second, my life end, in the second space, there was a small uh, TV and I presented uh, Frankfurt and Berlin through this video, through this TV. Then later on, I was invited to Paris. So I kind of did this inception where I presented the first and the second place in the third place. Uh, one thing also to mention, the last thing to mention uh, uh, is I, I also invited musicians to play music in my uh, suspended life and it was uh, for two nights and they came there and with their instruments and uh, they were like kind of uh, trying um, to play around because also the ropes when it hold the, the weight it's uh, when you touch it it make a sounds like a like a guitar almost yeah so this is my very quick presentation i will stop here now Uh, Malo, you are muted. Thank you, Khalid. Um, our, our next speaker is uh, Kinan Hamedin. He's an actor. He graduated from the Higher Institute of Dramatic Arts Damascus in 20, uh, 2014 and appeared in theater productions, films, and movie se uh, television series in Syria. He was not planning to leave his country, but after a theater workshop in Berlin, he was invited to join the Open Border Ensemble at the Kammerspiel Theater in Munich. Today, he is a member of the Exile Ensemble at the Maxim Gorky Theater in Berlin and is appearing in two of his current productions, Schwarzer Block and Alles unter Kontrolle, Everything's Under Control. He also acted in the new play, The Return of Danton, which was performed by the collective Malula at last weekend's Shubak Festival in London and is now available online. Welcome, Kinan. 
Thank you, Manu. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I just want to um, co uh, correct uh, the name of the collective Makluba. Maklu uh, oh, excuse me. No, all good. Uh, no, all good. All good. Just uh, the name. Uh, it's uh, it's an honor to to be today with the guys and with the with the institute and with with you, Manu. Uh, I will start um, like I will talk in general about. Um, uh, I start uh, like uh, I graduated in 2014, and uh, I uh, was uh, I had the chance to stay because I didn't um, like I was in the beginning uh, from uh, the graduating more interested to to see uh, how I can uh, stay and and see what's happening uh, in the country because it was interesting on the level of. Uh, of, of doing art in a place uh, where doing art is really hard and it's 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 not meaning sometimes uh, because of what happening uh, so uh, in the beginning I was I worked in the TV and in the in the theater and a little bit of film uh, and then later uh, I had the chance in, in Lebanon to go on a workshop with the Kamerspiele theater uh, who they were uh, searching for actors, Syrian actors, uh, to do the open border ensemble. And the idea uh, that the, um, in Germany they start to think how to open uh, the theater for non-speaker, uh, non-German speakers, and for other artists uh, from other countries. And uh, we we had this opportunity for for two years to to come to Munich. Um, so I worked there two years and a half uh, in the in the Kammerspiele Theater, and then I did the guest performance with with Gorky Theater in uh, in Hamlet Machina, uh, and later on uh, I uh, I also moved, or they also told me that they are interested to have me in Gorky Ensemble. Um, until yet, I did. Uh, two projects with them, uh, which I will show you the pictures. Uh, I think Coco, we can start uh, screening. This is uh, this is from the last show I did uh, in Mulheim or in, in Theater in the Ruhe, uh, with the return of Danton with Collective Makluba. And the idea of the collective is to present uh, work in, in, in Arabic uh, not in, in German theater, but uh, still, uh, so the, the whole play was in Arabic. This is, was for me a, a chance after three years uh, speaking uh, German and English on theater to speak again Arabic. Uh, it was a really a good chance. So this, this is a, a scene uh, from the play, uh, the play uh, written by Mudar al Hajji uh, and directed by Omar al Aryan. Uh, and um, it talks about, we can also go to the other picture. It talks about uh, artists uh, in exile who try to do a uh, German uh, play uh, to, to take funding. So, and, and what I liked about this play that it's, it's so close from our city or my situation at least, uh, so the, the, the characters is, was so close from you, so you can uh, really uh, develop something so close to you and you feel this warm between you and the character because uh, in the play, in the, the original play, it's the, the, the death of Danton for George Kushner, but we did adaptation on it and we put a play, it's a play inside play, so a Syrian group trying to do the death Danton for George Pushner. Uh, we can also move to the other picture. And uh, this is here the, the crew uh, in the rehearsals. And, um, and this, in this 10 days, uh, there's so much problems happening uh, between the, the characters. And in this problems, we present the big issues that the artists uh, uh, really discuss in exile, which is um, like mainly um, uh, the the the, uh, the the broken uh, characters that or the broken side inside you sometimes uh, because you you in a way you're leaving you left the country but there's something missing still and you are trying always to find the balance 
in your character. It's like I always, um, I always uh, uh, describe it like if if you have a if you don't have an arm for 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 first uh, two weeks you will you will you will feel you don't have it, but later you will use get used to it, but still you don't have the arm. So it's 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 like this. You are you are you, we are used to it. We start to get used to it, but still there is there is something missing, and this is what the play talking about. Uh, and we can also and the, and I choose it because I I I like it so much. I like this experience, and the text was amazing. And it was uh, in Chupac Festival uh, yesterday and the day before uh, online streaming. We can also move to the other picture. This is also from the play. This character uh, is Ias. Uh, he's the director of the group. And uh, there's behind me uh, Amal Omran. She's uh, a big actress, a big Syrian actress who I worked with her. And uh, she's also the dramaturge in the play. And uh, <clears throat> this is the presentation that the director is doing in this uh, picture. We can also move to the other picture. This is also like a moment from the play, uh, which is I like so much. This is the, 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 the group doing a party and the director coming to, to catch them in this moment. And there's a whole scene uh, happening. Uh, we can move to the other picture. So yeah, this is other show. I did in, in Gorky, it's called Alice unter Kontrolle. Uh, Malu, you mentioned it. And it's uh, it's different spaces uh, uh, created in, in Gorky in the whole theater. It's not on the stage, so it's it's a cubes uh, of uh, of plastic box, and in every box there is an actor and there is performance. And what I did in this performance that I, I speak my story, but uh, with characters and with uh, with cartons, a few. With figures, with the small figures, if you see in the in the pictures, there is like a building from Carton with the head of uh, Brecht, <laughs> and this is the characters uh, who I speak my story and play with them. And the, the 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 audience, if you can see, they can stay around me and see the. Um, we can move to the other picture, and this is also from the show. What I like. Uh, what we are discussing now in Gorky or in theater in general, like uh, because for for us for artists also also from the exile, also from Syria, especially from Syria, when you are talking all the time about uh, you uh, like your story, you are you presenting always your story and your identity. But sometimes it's so important how you want to present this identity. And this is what we like. I don't have any problem to speak about my story, but in an artistic way, in a, in a way which is really there is a, cre a creative in a creative way, let's say. And this is what I like in this play, because we did the whole story in figures and small figures and in, in, a, in, a, in a light way, uh, which you could connect more sometimes with the people, sometimes like this, sometimes like this. Uh, we can move to the other picture. This is also from the show. It's also the construction of the show is so interesting because there's this corridors. If you if you if you see this white, uh, this is the corridors the audience go through uh, to 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 move from box to box to continue see the show. We can move to the other picture. This is also from the old play. Uh, also, we can move it. We talked about it. Yeah, this project it's uh, a Schwarzer block, what uh, called an uh, English black block, which is talking about uh, Antifa, uh, anti-fascist, uh, the uh, radical left uh, movement, uh, which is uh, uh, I find it so interesting for me to to go on this uh, project. It was. Uh, fantastic to meet people really from uh, from the Antifa and to go on demonstration with them and to see that this they have a really long history. They start from the uh, 20s before also the First World War, they were there. And uh, to follow this through the German history, it's so interesting for me as a Syrian artist also 
I had to know on this play so much information I would no, never know uh, uh, about uh, German history. And uh, the, the, the nice uh, thing about the project that we were 15 actors and actresses. So it was, and we present the play in theater and the audience were, were in another theater. So it was interesting also the first time to work with camera uh, and uh, to, to, to not have the applause, to not have the people in the end. It's so weird for actors, but it was uh, like in Corona time. So we, we tried to, to do the show in a place and the audience can see the show from the other, from the screen. So it was mainly working with the camera. Uh, no, this is the, yeah. I'm sorry, Kinan, you just cut out a little bit. Uh, have you finished? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, finished. thank you very much. You're welcome. Our third presentation is by Diana El Giroudi, an independent documentary filmmaker, editor, and screenwriter. Her documentaries on women and social political tensions and contradictions include Dolls, a woman from Damascus from 2008, and Morning Fears and Night Chants from, Night Chants from 2017. In Damascus in 2008 with Orwa Narabia, she founded DocBox, an independent documentary film festival that has become an important platform in Syria and the Middle East. In Berlin, the film she produced, Silvered Water, Syria Self Portrait from 2014, directed by Osama Mohammed and Wiam Simav Bidikshen um, from 2014, and Return to Homes, directed by Talal Derki, 2013, won awards and international acclaim. Throughout her professional life, no matter what country she's been residing in, Diana has been a fierce builder of institutions. More recently, she stepped away from another of her initiatives, DocBox EV, which I think is edition five, which provides training, support, and education for a new generation of Middle East documentary makers. She's now making her films. Diana. Hi, thank you for having me. And uh, I was touched also to uh, watch uh, Khaled and uh, Tunan's presentation, very touching. Yeah, I am uh, going to show you a short clip of my upcoming film. So this is a sneak peek into a world of three hours. Um, uh, as you can see, I'm an, uh, a radical uh, documentary filmmaker. <laughs> so um, and what can I tell you about the film? I mean, I, let's watch the clip, I think. And then we could talk. Krankheiten drauf, Krankheiten, äh, 
Wenn ich einen Stoff verdrücke, braucht man was Giftiges, das man von einem anderen bekommt. Was? Ja, damit sie ganz viel und was tun können. Mhm. Ich muss mal mir auch ein bisschen was schnell machen. Nur 0,2 Prozent Moslems in Sachsen. Ja, ist mir egal, wie viele das sind, aber das sind, sind schon 0,2 zu viel. Echt? Das sollte sich denn ändern? Ich meine, das sind ja Kriegsflüchtlinge auch, ne? Ach, Kriegsflüchtlinge. Was sind denn das, die jungen Kerle Kriegsflüchtlinge? Ich glaube das nicht. Das sind Schmarotzer. Sind. Und diese Menschen aus den Kriegsgebieten, die sollen doch in reiche Öländer gehen, wo sie hingehören. Doch nicht zu uns. Wir haben doch genug Elend bei uns selber. Im Wesentlichen geht es mir darum, dass ich nicht als Nazi beschimpft werden möchte. Ich bin ein ganz normaler deutscher Bürger. Dass wir überhaupt dann noch Weihnachten feiern dürfen, ne? das wird ja schon witzig. Ich brauche die Leute nicht. Die, die feindlich sind uns gegenüber und das sind sie. Ja. Will ich mich nicht zu so äußern. Ich bin kein Nazi. Diana, thank you very much. I'm really glad that we saw the clip. When we were all talking about the visual presentations, um, I, I was asking our guests to show work that somehow revealed or that intersection between Syrian experience and the other place. Um, there's a certain narrative about Syrian migrants and refugees all the time. But for our purposes today, I'm, I'm really interested in focusing on arts and culture. And Diane, I'm gonna to turn to you first because we've just seen the film clip. And my question really is, is the experience of living and working in Berlin, how has that affected, informed or influenced your work? And I'm not just talking about the topic matter of your film, that you've that you've just finished republic its title is republic of silence yes. and you said it's three hours yes and then and then when we talked before you said it you had been working on it for 10 years yes. and i was so that, that's such a long i mean i myself do very long creative projects but that's a long time for a creative project and i was curious about no, I mean, I understand that for everyone who's moved and migration that they've been changed by the experience, but I'm very curious about how your working practices changed, how your film changed. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, as a documentary film, you know, documentary filmmaking is a vast ocean, you know, of nuances and, and the films I do usually are more like uh, uh, you know, an alert uh, message, uh, I would like to say, to humanity. It's not something that investigates what happens or the truth. It's not that kind of filmmaker I am. I'm more of a filmmaker who's, uh, um, or at least I try to be as, uh, you know, like to expose as much as possible 
uh, use my body, my, my sensibility also to reflect something that I internalize. And I think most artists do that. They internalize the world around them and re-externalize what they have, like a, like a, mullion, like a blending machine, let's say. And uh, I think immigration had helped me. Um, it was very challenging, very unsettling to migrate, you know, against your will or against your choosing. Uh, but it was also a nice, not a nice, a very constructive medium or process to, uh, to use this unsettling or uncomfortable feeling of translating yourself again and again and over and over in languages that are not native to you, to people who would uh, collaborate with you because filmmaking is a very collaborative uh, form of art. Uh, and it's, it, it, it's uh, many times you feel untethered uh, or like in Khaled's work, you, you're hanging upside down yeah. against gravity and all of this. Yeah. And you're looking to something that gravitates you. And what gravitates me is usually uh, empathy, you know, or the search of empathy. And to do empathy, you really need to work uh, with pain, with, uh, with, uh, with fear. With, uh, you need to, to bring those emotions very, uh, very vivid, at least, around you. Like, you need to <clears throat> nurture yourself also uh, you, upon such um, elements. And for me, as a filmmaker, words, sound, images are very, uh, you know, very delicate elements. And, and during migration and coming to Germany, uh, they became dangerous elements because you are bombarded as an individual, not only as an artist yeah. with cliches and mediatic terms and things that are so much of a political agenda, economical agenda rather than human communication. Uh, for example, for me, I would never understand the word civil war when people talk about Syria. It really triggers me. It, it literally triggers yeah. me every time I hear it because it's a term that was first used and continuously since the third month of the revolution when yeah. there were yeah. And, and continues to, to do that. So I was bombarded by this, bombarded by the fact that I suddenly became a refugee. It, as a, as a, as a dis, you know, like I became distinctive to others as a refugee or as a Syrian or as a Middle Eastern or whatever. People keep on asking me where do you come from, what kind of accent do you have, et cetera, et cetera. And it's suffocating and, and you need to breathe as a human being, but also as an artist, you need to have this, um, you know, um, a hemisphere of uh, oxygen around you. And I'm going to stop I, you there because I, I want to ask Kinan about something that you've also, you've been talking about. Kinan, you talked about, it's like losing an arm and that you're always trying to present yourself or a story and you also have to take in the audience the way the audience will accept or meet you halfway and and what diana was just saying it sounds like she's a paraplegic you know because of the experience of going through this can you talk a little bit more about your strategies like how do you how do you get over losing an arm or do you just get used to it and that's that and you have to like skip jump around that i think it's the like first um uh, there's like from there's some ex expectations from you as as someone uh, who come from a, from a place from a conflict place so the first thing you you come here there's like someone waiting for you to tell him your sad story or this is create for me a, 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 in the beginning it was create a little bit of like um like two levels uh in, in the art scene i'm talking i'm coming to work as an artist and there's someone want me to tell him my story which is so rich for me and good but i want to choose the way i want to tell this story because we are not just uh, talking we are on stage 
And on stage or on camera or in an in, in, in exhibition, there is a way of telling your emotions uh, uh, to the people. And there's a way where you want to present uh, yourself and your character. And this is what we, I think three of us are mainly Syrian artists. We are like trying to, 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 to make this gap between the expectation and what we are really want, little less. So I think you can do it in the beginning because in the beginning you also would go this uh, broken feeling because you have it. It's not like, it's not that I, I'm not talking that I want to cancel everything I had. I'm just talking about artificially, artistically, if I want to tell you my story, I want to find a form for it and, and a way uh, and not just uh, say it. So I think it's a, it's a process, it's a long process. And uh, it's a process in, in, in the stage, on, on, in art and outside it, and mainly in life, I feel, uh, which also like there's everything have, have, have both sides. So for example, there's this, this side and there's the other side for me, which is like uh, the revolution game is that I know now in this diversity of people, of Syrian people that I get to know, it's, it, I'm, I, I'm so glad from it. And this in Syria, I didn't have it. I didn't know for in Syria people from the north or from the east, or we just was in the capital, and the capital was everything. <laughs> and this is, was, now we had, I had the, the opportunity to see how much we are different and how much rich uh, this place with so much people. And so I don't know if I answer your question, but it's, it's a long process, let's say. <laughs> I'm going to uh, go to uh, Khaled now. And, you know, I'm very curious about that the people who are going to see your work, your, your artwork in exhibitions, they're not going to be Syrians. They might not, I mean, some of them might be. Some of them might be Middle Easterners, but you're actually talking to people or the people who are seeing your work don't have the same references that you do, or maybe their passions are not the same. So I'm very curious about that, that instance in your um, thought making process where you push, uh, I don't know, are you pushing an idea? Are you thinking about that for an audience? Or are you thinking of another way of presenting? Your ideas are hard. It's hard to show anxiety. It's hard to show upset, you know, emotional upset. Like how do you do that in a way that translates across cultural, you know, uh, experiences? Um, yeah, I think it started in 2000 nine uh, when I was still in Denmark and I started presenting some work on Facebook and people liked like I used to do painting before and some people like some images more than the other then I caught myself later on while I producing a new work that I was thinking of the audience of the social media and then I thought that's moment like no way I'm not gonna do this anymore I'm not gonna consider to to have two audiences let's say because you have to decide I think, in which, which audience are you addressing, right? Because in one hand, I have the whole Syrian community, especially through social media. So any presentation or any work I want to produce, it has to communicate with the, with the, with the specific context of, of your audience, right? Because the, the understanding of, of art, the history of art, how we think of it or uh, how we perceive it in Syria, it's different from Germany, it's different from other places as well, right? Like if you go to Malaysia or we go to other places. So if we shift from this Western kind of central way of perceiving art, it will, it, it, I think I will communicate with everything differently. So that moment I decide I am here now, I am present here. My main thing is advocacy. How can we as artists, as a storyteller, how can we take this pain? How can we channel it? Because we have, we are privileged. At the end of the day, we say we have a struggle and of course we do and we are more vulnerable and sensitive, whatever. But also we are privileged that at least we have the, the, the tool that we can channel this, this, this pain or any, anything we're going through through, through our uh, practice or uh, production. So, and uh, I felt it's very important to understand the language, the artistic language of my audience and reflect on this 
with the with the with the with with art that can communicate to them, right? So that's kind of the decision where everything shifted to be mainly focused on Western understanding of uh, contemporary art. Uh, you are muted. Did you feel that you lost your, and, and that's what I'm wondering about all three of you. Do you feel that you've lost, as your work is more recognized by other people or that, they're they're more they're open to it. Are you fearful about the your not your past fans, your past audience, but are you fearful that you lose your connection? I think I lost it more or less because I. It's funny enough that most of the of the people here, the non the non Syrian people, know my work more than the Syrian people. I mean, especially because I engage. I don't engage my work in social media, so you have to go to my website and you have to know anyway that I have a website to see the work. While how work is circulated all the time in the virtual spaces like uh, uh, Instagram or Facebook or whatever among Syrians in this parallel republic, that how I call it. Um, it's different uh, and I kind of lost the connection because also I wanted to use English as a main language of communication because this is how also if you want to make advocacy, this is how you communicate with wider audience, right? So I did lost this connection to Syrians and now I'm just now recognizing that actually it's very important to translate everything back to Arabic because th this connection is still vivid. I was talking with Modar al Hajji a few days ago. He's a, also a Syrian um, theater uh, uh, writer and director and he was, we were talking about specific about this point and he said you know what I, I prefer to write in Arabic I prefer to address I prefer to address the Syrian people I said 100% this is very legit and very important because if we all gonna do this advocacy for the case then or the cause then also the, the community itself with lo it will lose its, its own connection to the production so I think it's all important to have like all the aspects I think it's very important to be thought of and included. Diana, do you have that fear? Do you have that fear that somehow your experience and the documentaries you're making outside, even though Republic of Silence, you did say that you're including film footage from Damascus, so I, I and Germany, so it's it's both together and probably more. But do you are you fearful that you, you know, your institutional life has really been about building up? Syrian voices, telling Syrian stories, helping younger Middle Eastern documentary makers. So you're very tied in professionally to those people. But I'm wondering about your own, your own narratives. Are you worried that somehow you're yeah. moving away or? Yeah, no, I get to your point. I think it's, I'm not worried at all. On the contrary, I, I, as you said at the beginning, it's culture is about building nuances and keep you know, like attracting, um, you know, elements from around the world doesn't have a nationality culture. I don't, I don't agree when people say Syrian culture, French culture or whatever. These are, I, I really don't uh, confirm to these uh, um, definitions. I think on the, again, I'm gravitated to empathy and with empathy there are literally no border lines. Maybe they are important in visas, but for visas. Yeah. But I really, I really think on the contrary, it's, it's, it's very tiring uh, to adapt and learn to new audiences and, and, and take them in, you know, like you need as an artist to take in your audiences, whether local or, you know, completely foreigners. And, and it, 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 it's, a, it's taxing. You need to learn a lot and internalize a lot. Of course, it's not an easy thing. It's not something you do over an app. But I think on the contrary, it's something that enrich you and enrich the way you communicate, the, the way um, you produce, you look like you have a better vision. And on, I, I, I think uh, a friend of mine once said, probably uh, the Syrian revolution and diaspora happened so that the Syrian cuisine can, you know, in, in, <laughs> interpret the rest of the world. Uh, he was very happy to have a local restaurant next to him in Paris. Well, and, I, <laughs> and I think the same with everything. I mean, yes. we are taking things from other people and other collaborators, artists and so on, yes. and vice versa. Sometimes, yes, it, it seems, I have to admit, sometimes it seems so frustrating that people don't get you or get your 
uh, elements of the art you produce. Um, but I don't think it's a closed, uh, uh, yeah. I think it's, it's just the first step of many uh, expressions. Kinan, I'm I'm very curious because you know when we talked before you you talked about coming from a different school of method acting. You'd come from the Eastern school. You were more at home with Chekhov than Bertolt Breck, you yeah. know. And I'm sort of curious, like, do you feel that you as an actor? I mean, I'm sure that you've changed because you're doing different kinds of acting, but do you feel that there has been a creative approach or a creative strategy that you have had to work on? Sure, first we start in the language, like uh, <laughs> I'm the only one who have to speak uh, in the language of the country, like to, to present the art, we have the text and I have to learn it in German. So for me going to the rehearsal is from the first day I'm shaking, shaking like this. And in Syria, I go to the rehearsal, I know everything, I know how what I would say, but there I have to think always about the sentence and the idea and to save the text and to work before two months and to be in the same level with the, with the other actors, you know, because yeah, you are, you are Syrian and you are doing art and it's nice, but then you have to be also, uh, uh, you have to be present. So at first we start with the language for, for me, for sure. Uh, the, the, the question of the language is, is a big question and the answering is to really speak in the language of the country because then you have more connection with the people in, in the terms of theater, which is so different because, for example, when we present Arabic text, the people always looking to the screen and then you lose this, uh, uh, this connection with the audience. And uh, this is first what I had to change or what I had to think about or put more work on me to, to do. Uh, the other thing is the, the way of performing, like the way of uh, what's the, what's the, what's theater means now uh, in Germany and what theater means in Syria before and how um, I find I reached a way that both of them so rich and I don't like I respected so much what I had in Syria also in the High Institute because I um, I really um, when I came here I felt there's so much things I know from the place or from Syria or things connected with with the, with the, with the acting and about the method it's mainly uh, we talked before about the phone that we are uh, we learned more uh, from um, like uh, East Europe and from Russia and from the, uh, so our professors was mainly from there and we didn't, for example, speak with the audience directly. It's not so rare in, in Damascus and here in Germany, you mainly speak with the audience and the audience is the fourth character. So for me, this is like, uh, like something new, or not to learn, I know how to do it, but to experience it. And this is, uh, this was uh, really uh, nice, yeah. This is actually, I have to say, this is terrible, we're running out of time and we're just getting started. And I feel like we could really like light it up. However, before, before we, we go, I wanna make sure that we get one of the questions from the audience. How, to, uh, a question for all of you, how do you feel or how can the host culture be more welcoming, accepting and open to you and your experience while being respectful? How can the host culture help more? Um, can I start? Yes, please. Yeah, so um, I think by changing the lens, how they are seeing us, right? So we all the time in the last few years, we've been seen through this lens of being a refugee Syrian artist. So, and also if I want to even take it a little bit further, so it's not also being a refugee. So if you go to all the museums around the world and you see the production that is presented in big museums from the art, artists from the Middle East or the Arab region, it's all the time around the same topic. We are in a way, it seems like we are not allowed to think abstractly, right? Like we are not allowed to, not we are not allowed, there's like kind of force in specific direction that tickles with war, with the revolution, with women rights, with LGBT, with religion. It's all the time under the same roof, right? So we all painted, been painted with the same brush. And I think this kind of take away our individuality and which is the essential thing of, or the core thing of being an artist. I think once, 
maybe institutions start changing this orientalistic post colonized lens and seeing us through our individual being i think that's will be the first mutual kind of eye level uh, uh uh, act of uh, horizontal solidarity and understanding. Diana Kinan, do you want to come in here? I'm not sure uh, what the co-host can do. It's a lot of work adapting. I think it's just patience because a lot of things might be misunderstood. It's this tolerance, understanding big intentions because uh, for me, coming here, of course, you are expected to do many things. Uh, in a new country, you need to also decide if you're going to, or at least understand, grasp uh, that you are actually staying. And this takes a lot of time. So you, you, uh, you adjust and uh, remodel, modulate your um, investment, how much you want to invest in this new country. Once you understand that this will be your new country, if the country welcomes you. And so in the case of Berlin, I think it was, I told you before, it was a sweet, a sweet spot being in Berlin because it's not very commercial, not too uh, aggressive, not too industrial. Um, and I think having a bigger community of like-minded artists and a community also, a cultural community of refugees from all over the world, second generation, third generation helps creates this buffer zone that you're not in a in a foreign body immediately, but you have your also um, a social fabric that is really nuanced and colorful strong. and strong. It's really strong and it's really incubating. It's I think that yeah. this is one of the things that post countries or cultures can learn from Berlin, I would say is this this uh, multitude and uh, diversity, it, it is really, you don't feel uh, a unicorn. <laughs> no, it's, it's very interesting. I, 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 in my discussions with all three of you, I've got that feeling. Kinan, I'm very curious. I've heard that there is a real uh, engagement between uh, not only the Syrian actors doing their work there, but also German theaters. I mean, you've been with two theaters already. I'm sorry to hurry you up, but can you talk about that? The, as the, you know, they brought you in. They want you there. Um, yeah. yeah, this is like uh, uh, for me. It's uh, it's so big this experience because it opened for me also another chance to look how the things from uh, from other perspective could be uh, also uh, in Germany. Many, especially in Munich, uh, because uh, I was there for two years and I had the chance to know so much people and to be in, in, in projects and to see, for example, how they work, the timing of the show. They just uh, have one month and a half. They do one show in Syria. We take three months or sometimes six months to, prefer, to, to present one piece. And this, like uh, this, changing or timing uh, fast, or the fa the machine, I, I call it in the beginning. I was calling it machine German machine theater, but it was it, it turns that it's on all Europe. It's the, it's the same way, and I start to know that also in theater there is a marketing and there is market. There is topics where you. Uh, where people talk about and people hide and say, no, we don't talk about now. Like, for example, also the Syrian uh, story, it's not so now present in the market of theater. So you can find that there's <laughs> so much uh, things you discover uh, during work in, working in big uh, institutes and uh, theater institutes. And this is what I didn't, uh, this was for, so new for me. Uh, so I deal with uh, also all of this um, and to deal with all of this, sorry, in a personal level, it's so hard. So you have to go above uh, your uh, uh, nice idea about being a, 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 a theater actor and uh, just following the art and going on like uh, what you have really to present and uh, uh, working also in different cities. It was uh, like it affect you in a way, like working in Munich in this Kammerspiele big theater, where the people, also the audience is, is from a certain level uh, who they come to the theater. 
and they expect to see something and then they present something else and then uh, the, like the, the audience have a direct uh, connection with the theater so they can get angry and ask uh, what they want really to uh, from the theater to present and then coming to Gorky to leftish theater uh, who present really different and uh, so much uh, different stories it's really a big uh, changing for me for sure i feel in Gorky more home because i feel it's a small theater and it's mainly the place like uh, diana was saying berlin is really a uh, sweet place and diverse there's so much diversity so in the theater in Gorky, we are not just syrian there's bulgars there's Poland actors there's palestinian actors uh, and uh, and this is the, the nice thing. This is what I like uh, working in theater. And to also answer the last question you was asking about like, uh, if it's, uh, if we long or we are like, it's so hard to not connect with, with our background or our people back. It's all, I think, uh, um, it's all connected. You can't uh, disconnect yourself. You, you can try for two or three years, but then later um, you alone will connect with your people because it's, it's, it is like this. You can't just disconnect yourself. And uh, I think the work, it comes from you. It comes not just from the moment you are in, it comes from your history. And it comes from, and you're present in the theater or in art. It comes from, uh, from, from how your experiences. So uh, I think for sure uh, it affects us uh, and it stay with us. And uh, it's a, it it was a nice uh, chance to be in certain in two theaters in Germany. And I'm looking forward to be also in another places to. Uh, to see the work or to, to really get them to know it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that we're going to see you in many productions. I think we have to wrap it up now. I'm sorry that it's so short. It's such an interesting conversation. I'd like to thank uh, Khaled Barake, Kenan Hamedin, and Diana El Jaroudi for, for joining us today. Thank you to the Middle East Institute, to Lynn Schneid and Kate Seeley and, and Lena Jonk from the Goethe Institute. And um, I think this is a conversation that can keep going. So we'll have to uh, come back together again soon. Yes, uh, thank you, Malu, for your expert moderating. And indeed, what a, what a fascinating conversation. I wish we had more time and thank you for the presentations. They were wonderful. Thanks again to the Goethe Institute for partnering on this panel. And we hope to see everyone at the MEA Art Gallery for the last two months of our Syria exhibit. Thank you all again and enjoy the rest of your day. Take Thank care. You. Thank, Thank you, you everyone.